Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. You're probably tired of these intros, but I have nothing better to say besides that. So you're stuck with them for now. If you have something better, let me know and I'll try it out. But today we're going to be doing another tutorial with server banners. We've done a couple different styles in the past. I'm going to do something more cyberpunk themed this time around. Definitely not in anticipation of Cyberpunk 2077 coming out, but anyway, we're going to do that today. And I do want to mention is most of these tutorials that you see for server banners, I think I'm the only one making them at the moment, but these designs and ideas, they're really applicable to any other banner you make. What I'm saying is you could watch Twitter banner tutorials, YouTube banner tutorials, and take those same concepts and apply them to Discord banners. And they'll work just as fine, it'll look just as great. It'll take some tweaking to get the shape down to this, but those are other great places to look for more ideas. So today we're gonna be doing a cyberpunk, as I mentioned, to start out, you're gonna wanna make a canvas that's this size, 960 by 540. It's kind of the standard for Discord banners. And the banners I'm talking about are the ones you unlock from tier 2 of boosting, which you need 15 boosts to do. So it doesn't really matter which color you use to start out. I'm just going with this. You can use white, black, any color in the rainbow, or any color that exists, and just plop it down. Next thing you want to do is grab your pen tool and just make a triangle sort of cutout. I'm going to do it like that, I think. No, that's not big enough. All right, I like that. And just go all the way around and make sure you're inside because if you right click out here, it's going to give you this. So be in here and then click make selection, hit OK, and then click Control J on your keyboard. That's going to pop up onto its own separate layer. And then we're going to do blending options. We're going to do a bevel, a drop shadow. Actually, let me hide that bevel right now. Drop shadow, I want to be a little farther. Oops, wrong way. Just like that. Let's see. Disclaimer, this is my first time making this. I did a little mock-up earlier, but I didn't get too far because I got the general idea down for how I wanted it to look. You don't want to watch the whole thing because this is going to be a bit complicated. And then feel free to just download the template and go from there. But this guide, I'll show you exactly how to make what I'm doing. And I think that's it, looks a bit powerful now, but we can always cut back on it. So I like to hide these. Now, name this top right cutouts, control J, control T. Hold shift and move this all the way around. Check mark. Move this into the corner until you see the guiding lines pop up. And then move this one down just to hide or two down to hide the end piece. And name this bottom right cut out. I just realized. This is actually left, not right. I do not know my directions. Top left, doesn't really matter. Blending options, go over to the drop shadow and flippity floppity, the other side. And then check mark. And I always uncheck global light because if you click that, then all every single drop shadow you have in this, in this image is gonna be screwed over whenever you mess with that. So don't leave this unchecked. There's probably good places to use it, but this is definitely not one of those places. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this stock image. I'll include this in the download. And then control T, resize that down. Let's take it to about that angle. Continue resizing. Fine for now. I'm going to continue resizing in just a sec. Right click, create clipping mask. Control T once again, and continue resizing it until it's exactly how you want it. So I am pretty happy with that. 
Control J, Control T, flip it all the way around, and move it to the other side. Same thing, clipping mask, just like that. What I'm actually gonna, and make sure you check the corners, for example, this corner. I missed it just a little bit. There we go. That lines up. Let me make sure that's lined up. Yep, it's all lined up. Let me put these into, actually I'll name this the main overlay because we'll do some more messing around with that later. Main overlay, shift down, control G, and now we'll name these the corner sections. All right, let me grab my other image and I'll be right back. Okay, I've grabbed my image. I'm just gonna do a control V to paste it, control T to transform it, and then resize it to fit the background's check mark. Then we're gonna do filter, blur gallery, field blur, and then we're gonna blur this a bit. Not too much, not too little. I like that, like we can still work with it. So I'm gonna hit okay, and this is gonna involve a lot of layering. Because right now it looks pretty basic, we'll just drop shadows, bevels, and overlaying images, so a little bit of blur. But now this is where the fun really begins, and it's really up to you how you approach this. You can grab other effects if you want, and what I really recommend you do is go on YouTube and search for GFX packs and download a few of them. Some of them can be really large and maybe they gigabyte range in size, but go to just Google or search GFX packs, download a few. I'm never gonna make one, sorry. There's such a pain to do. I don't really have the time for it. And there's so many available to you. It's not really worth the effort. Just go find one, download it, and you have all the effects for you to play with. But for now, I have a few that I have saved from something else that I'm going to bring over and I'll show you how to apply those. And those will be included because this what, you, what I'm working on now is going to be the final template that gets uploaded. Alright, so I went ahead and pulled over a few of the assets I'd be using. Let me go through them one by one. Get rid of that for now. So the first one you're going to see is this. Actually, we can get rid of this as well. We don't need that anymore. You're going to see is this, that's not it, this right here to add a bit of light to the image is going to see particles. So let me copy the layer style, not what I wanted. And you can see it's just a black shape with some dust particles with some light there. And then the effects are going to be applied. There's going to be a lighten at 40% opacity. And they can always mess around with that, but I'm perfectly fine with this setting. So I'm going to put that right there in the corner and I'll name this the dust particles. And actually we can go ahead and group all of this because this is going to be our base layer. Make this purple to match everything else. Next thing you're going to see is, actually I'm just going to go one by one, then we're going to start messing around. This, I don't know exactly what this shape is, but once again, you can find all this sort of stuff just by downloading GFX packs, and that's what I really recommend that you do. So I'm going to go ahead and reapply the effects, multiply at 67%. I'm just going to put this somewhere that I believe it's going to look nice. I'm going to come back against that in the future and we'll once again copy that around to other locations. Next thing you're going to see is this binary code, zeros and the ones. I'll name this binary code. I'm probably going to leave this alone for now and come back to it later, but as you can see it's at screen 85% and it has the following adjustments to it. Color overlay, this is the hex code for it. Pause if you have to. Outer glow, that's what it has. Pause if you have to. 
but I'm going to go ahead and hide that because I believe I'm going to use that when we add the text. I actually named this the brush shapes. Next thing you're going to see is the glass, and I love to use this sort of effect. As you can probably see with past projects. But I'm going to go ahead and apply it here as well. Maybe see if I can bring this down just a bit. A little powerful at the moment. Yep, I like that. I like that a fair bit. It's glass. I'll leave that alone for right now and get to this one. Now come back to it. And this last one is sort of a glowy particle disintegration Thanos snap effect. Except it looks prettier. This one, let me just adjust it real quick and I'll show you the effects that it has. And this is generally what more detailed Photoshop GFX work is, is just layers upon layers upon layers. And with a sprinkling of layers on top of that. I'll name this the Sparkle Thanos Snap. This is normal, 74% opacity, and it has color overlay, I believe. Yep, and outer glow. Same thing as before. Same exact stuff as the binary code. Leave that just like there. And then color correction hopes to give it a bit more contrast. I'll show you what all that is. This was taken from a GFX pack as well. Because doing all this stuff takes a year and a half and it's much easier to download a GFX pack and use it for its intended purpose. So this would be included and you can find tons of color corrections as I keep on mentioning and effects within GFX packs and I really recommend that you try those out. So let me go back over dust particles and I'm going to pause while I go around and do this so you don't have to watch this whole ordeal. Okay so I went ahead and made a few adjustments to the background as you can see. I did bring in one more effect, which you will see in here as well, which is this. Let me go ahead and clear the layer style so you can see where that is. It's just a bunch of wavy lines and a black background. And then once you apply these effects to it, the black background disappears and you can go ahead and move it around to your liking. So now that this background is basically done, you could always add more layers if you want to. Just be careful about overdoing it because believe it or not, there is too much, even when there is a lot. That's my philosophical quote for the day. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to wrap up these sections here, and then we're finally going to get to the part where we write this, write your group name in the center or put a logo there. It's really up to you what you want to do with it. So let me go ahead and grab this, bring it over to the top, and hide that because we don't need a right this second. Put up there, create clipping mask, control T, and any assets that I have that aren't the effects, because these effects, the only versions of them I have, are from my old project. Because I haven't worked with a cyberpunk theme in almost two years now. It's been quite a while since I've done that. We're gonna go to divide. And now let, let me try that. No, I like how that is. Because it adds some texture and feel to the image. What was once static with shapes now has, I'm overusing the word, but it now has some texture to it. Now you could play around with this some more if you really wanted to. I'm going to leave it off right here. Because personally, I like how that looks. It is a little bright compared to the rest of the image, but hey, gets the job done. So we're on to our last section, which is going to be the text. Now this can just be right here, control G, we'll name this text slash logo. It's really up to you what you do here. If you have a logo that you like to use, or if you actually want to put a cyberpunk logo right across, you can do that. But for now, I'm just going to type in my group's name, which is Tsuke. They're going to put like this, T-S-U-K-E-I, 
think that's a bit too big. Let me see. A little teeny tiny bit smaller. And let me test it out real quick. See how that look when it's going across. Big and vibrant. That's the word I would describe it with. Now I'm using the Nexa Bold font. It's not my favorite font to use. I prefer something where the K kind of extends out a little bit. So the K goes like this. If you're watching my mouse cursor. Down, out, and then both up and down. But this works for now. So now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and apply a stroke and a outer glow to the image. Okay, so right click, blending options. We're going to do a stroke. Eight pixels is a bit too much. Let's try four pixels. Maybe five. I kind of like five. That works for me. And then an outer glow. That's too much, so we're going to adjust this a little bit. Give me one sec, I'm going to pause real quick so I can adjust this to look good and you don't have to spend 10 minutes watching me adjusting. Okay, I think that should be good. I might actually space out the words a little bit. So this is the color I'm using for the outer part. And it's a cyberpunk theme as you can probably see. Now at the moment you're thinking, hey, this looks pretty basic. Where's the flare? I'll show you in a sec. Let me just space this out a little bit. There we go. All right, let me go ahead and grab that texture. All right, so I went ahead and dropped the texture in. As you can see, it's a big old wavy pattern. And what we're gonna apply to it is overlay all the way down to probably that. Let's see, clipping mask, control T. Let's move this to fit. I might actually bump it up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. And then if you really wanna get wild, which I probably recommend, you can start adding cuts to this image and start cutting out pieces and give it a sort of discord, distorted, holy look, I suppose is what you'd call it. So before we do that, we wanna make sure that we, I'm gonna create a backup real quick. It's always good to make backup copies because you never know what's gonna happen. We'll name this backup. We're gonna hide that. Bring it down to the bottom, make a new folder called backups. And then we're gonna make this, nope, gray. This, we're gonna make sure you rasterize the layer style. And yep, I messed it up a little bit. Bring that back down. And that looks, definitely looks better than what it was doing before. We're gonna add blending options. Maybe we should do that afterwards. I think afterwards, so we'll do the cuts first. So for the cut tool, you're gonna to be once again returning to your good old friends, the pen. Actually name this the wavy, wavy lines. So with the pen you're gonna do is you're gonna take one section here, make sure you don't forget that there's a blue outer glow there. Take one section there, click to the ends, and we're gonna make a little cutout just like that. Then make selection, click OK. Get the move tool, and we're just gonna move that just the slightest amount. And there we go. Now it looks like that's glitched out a little bit. And if you keep on going at it, now I'm not the best at this. There's probably some of you who can do a much nicer job or a cleaner job than what I'm doing. But if you keep on going with that, you can make some really neat effects. 
So you can probably skip ahead if you want to. I'm not going to pause at this part just so you can see exactly how I'm doing it. But it makes these glitch effects. You could probably even do it where it's not all the way across, but just section by section. That would likely look neater. And what I'm talking about is if you go just like that. And you can make selection and then you glitch it like, not what I'm saying glitch it, I mean move it like this. I guess that works. You can probably look a bit nicer, but I'm going to stick to how I was doing it before for the time being. And then let's try something like. How about if we go wild and do something like that, like this. Cutting across multiple sections at once that have already been cut once. You know, I have a bad feeling this is not going to look great. I have a very bad feeling about this. Yeah, I don't know, it feels a little excessive to me. I guess I'll leave it like that. Uh, it's all good. All right, one more cut. And I guess just like here. To top it off. And then we have our main text done. So we're going to go ahead and move this into a way that we want it to appear. Once again, I'm going to create a backup. Like that. I like having my backup just in case. The reason I made a backup is because I'm going to be rotating this at an awkward angle. And then unrotating it is always difficult and a pain to do. Unrotate it into a way that looks like the way it did before. So move that there. And now we can come back to the binary code and mess around with that if we want to. So control T, rotate this. And then move it all the way across. Might even make it a bit smaller. the opacity down a bit more because you don't want the binary code to be the highlight of the image you just want it to be there so people can see it I might actually move these two just so it looks like they're all the way kind of just the background section of this whole thing now this is basically it for this tutorial let me pause real quick and upload it to the group so we can take a look at what it looks like as an actual banner all right, so I went ahead and unpaused, and you can see it actually turned out looking pretty darn good in this corner right here. Kind of wish, you know, I actually might use this design myself. I wasn't expecting it to look like that. So there are other ways you could take this cyberpunk theme and apply it yourself. This is just one example. You could add other things to it. I'm going to add a logo, the cyberpunk logo itself and see how that looks. I'm not, I don't think it'll look too well, but we can always check it out and see. So the tutorial basically ends here. I'll upload all of this to the, to a drive folder where you can download it and edit it yourself. As I mentioned, use GFX packs. Those are your best friends. You might have to bounce around to a few different ones to find what you're looking for, but you eventually find it. So thank you for watching. If you're ending off here, if you want to see what it looks like with the logo, stick around and I'll go ahead and do that. And so, wow, this is record time. This pause button is absolutely on point. If you remember my other tutorials in the past, I didn't know the pause button even existed. So you just have to watch the whole tedious task of me clicking around, figuring things out.
because as I mentioned, most of the stuff I work on, I make it once and then I work off a template because it just saves me time. So when I recreate things for tutorials, I kind of have to backtrack and figure out how I did things in the past. So I'm gonna pause real quick and I'll go ahead and drop in the logo and get that done. All right, so welcome back to the little test run over the logo look like put here. I don't have the highest of hopes, but let's take a look. I'm just curious to see how this will turn out. And of course, I'm using the Cyberpunk logo because this is the best fit for this. Let's try. Did I add the drop shell like I was going to? One second. I could have sworn I was going to add a drop shell to this. I forgot. Let me see. Don't want the spread high. Don't want any distance on it. Am I even doing anything? Why is it going up? I wanted to go. Whatever. Let's go with that. All right, let's hide that. You'll get all of this. I'm going to upload it. Let's try the Cyberpunk logo. Let's see. Let's see. Blending options. Actually, it's copy. I mean, I guess you could use it. That's a big guess. I probably wouldn't. I just go with what I did, but you know, it's up to you. And I did notice when I put it in that this was a bit faint, so you might actually want to bump this back up a little bit. Let me see where's the binary at. Binary code. I might actually bump up the opacity to get a bit more visible because it was hard to see when it was in the banner form. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around the, the whole. 27 minutes if you actually did it, if you skip to the ends, well, thanks for clicking. I never say this, but please subscribe, please like the video, it really means a lot to me. We're trying to, trying to grow the channel with, right now, just Photoshop tutorials, but in the future, I'd like to have podcasts and other things related to anime in Japan. And this is just a starting point because it's something I can do myself without having to have a whole team of people working with me to get it done. So it would really mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day.